Paul was born in Lewiston, Maine. Paul's passions include architecture, interior product, and fashion design, as well as running, cycling, swimming, and rowing. Paul's work is based on the exploration of narrative in design and telling the story of the concept. Paul is the design principal of SMRT Architects and Engineers in Portland, Maine. And he lives with his wife, Mary, who's a folklorist and executive director of Wayside Food Programs, and daughter, Ava. Um, Paul, I have some interesting facts. Paul learned to sew from his mother and grandmother while his brother played sports. On their second or third date, his wife mentioned needing a suit for work, so he offered to make, him, make her one, and he did, as well as a wedding dress and several others and most of our baby clothes. I'm now reading her quote. Uh, not, not my baby clothes. <laughs> he was a math geek in high school. He reads books on couture design for fun. He's a triathlete, won a national carpet design competition for Mannington Carpets, which will be rolled out <laughs> at Neocon in Chicago next month. As a teen, he designed and sold a game to Atari. Was it Vanguard? That's my favorite. <laughs> he macrames, has renovated two of the four homes, speaks French, Italian, a little Czech. Czech. <laughs> um, he can literally do anything it makes me crazy, she says. Um, I believe Keo called him a superhero. So, Paul Lewandowski on Couteau de Interior. No pressure after that intro. So I started sewing when I was 10. Uh, I was fascinated by my grandmother's sewing machine, and my first project was a dog bed, um, which I really enjoyed. <laughs> but I've always loved the way materials worked and how things went together. So um, designing and, and uh, working on, on clothes was always a great hobby that I had. So it really came to flourish about five years ago when I started participating in a competition in Boston for the Interior Design, International Interior Design Association, which is a charity event where you make fashion out of interior design materials, carpeting, uh, wood flooring, um, wallpaper, things that you wouldn't typically wear. Uh, and the four pieces I've selected here, the first one is based on, uh, was based on a theme of golden age of motoring. When you got dressed up to do something like drive a car. Uh, and this was based on one of the collections. And some of the outfits were pretty crazy, but you needed them because the cars were open. Um, I'm gonna take a breath. So the materials I used for this were some carpeting, some uh, linen-backed wallpaper, some rubber flooring, some door hardware, some copper pipe, and dry ice. The look <laughs> is uh, over-the-knee boots, because I like those, um, shorts, and a duster. And this was the sketch for that project, and you can see some of the materials here, and then the runway shots. Here's the look on the runway. The bustier is rubber flooring. Those shorts feature a 36-inch zipper. It goes all the way around. The belt is made out of dog leash hardware. The, um, the jacket has uh, door hardware for the clasps, and the um, staff is copper and actually had dry ice, so it would steam. There was a steampunk sort of theme to this piece. You can see the jacket here, which had this sort of like um, Sergeant Pepper, Michael Jackson look with all the hardware, <laughs> and the boot with the hobnail trim and a door stop for a heel. Uh, I put knockers on the um, shoulders. I wanted to put them somewhere else, but <laughs> that's where they stayed. <laughs> the second look is based on steamships and travel again, but this time Titanic, when you had these outlandish, women had these outlandish outfits to wear when they were traveling, and also looking at this sort of frou-frou movement in Paris, which were these um, sort of roughly dresses that sort of cinched in. Coming up. <laughs> this time materials were again some rubber flooring. Uh, primary backing for carpet, which is like a gray tarp that frays like crazy when you cut it. Some uh, secondary backing, which is like a net, which, was sh um, which I sort of shredded, and then carpet fiber, which I knit with a Hello Kitty kid's toy into a tube and then re-knit again. Um, looking at some hardware here, here's the look, the sort of showboat uh, that... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. The umbrella is that backing with the edge, dyed pink with the edge beaded, uh, the bustier again in rubber, and the bottom of uh, the dress here has uh, that primary bar backing sort of tufted into roses, and then closet rods, uh, socket, closet rod sockets for the uh, uh, decoration. 
there's a tool caterpillar I had to make to hold up that collar, and then you can see the baseball stitching on the um, bustier. So I didn't play sports, but I did uh, look at them. <laughs> The third look was uh, another year, and I was trying to do a, a twist on the little red dress, looking at that sort of 60s iconic dress, the sort of 70s macrame, which is a shame in my life, uh, 80s leg warmers and 90s hoodies uh, to sort of reinterpret the little black dress into the little red, red dress. This time looking at, again, some sheet vinyl in red and then welding rod, which is the material that's used to weld two sheets of vinyl flooring together. You heat it up so you don't get any bugs or dirt in between. It's, um, throw in a little Chippendales collar and some uh, pine cones or cones made out of palms that you do on Palm Sunday. Um, and then look here is a macrame dress that has uh, these discs, die cut discs of uh, flooring on it with a hoodie. You can see the little collar and then the stockinette knit fishnet stockings, which I did not knit, but um, kind of complete the look. And then some details here. You can see the macrame of the dress, which was made out of the rubber, uh, that fishnetting, and then those discs of uh, flooring that a lot of people told me looked like pepperoni, <laughs> which was not the look I was going for, but, but it did kind of give it an interesting look. The last look I'm showing, I was working on a dress for my sister-in-law, which was a wedding dress, so it was lace. And I started thinking, well, all these laces are all floral patterns. What if they were made out of something else? What if it was a letter or a text or something like that? And I remember this piece of art that I'd seen that was all text. And at the same time, thinking a, a joke about the movie The Devil Wears Prada, one of the quotes from it. Um, so I came up with the quote coat, which was based on a quote from the movie, which I won't tell you, but you can read, and some, uh, sh again, some sheet vinyl and some, this time some nice wool, as well as some industrial materials, and uh, looking at how uh, letters could become a garment. And the reveal, any moment. <laughs> and here's the coat. So it's a, it's a lace of text, and it actually flows pretty well for being about an eighth inch thick vinyl material. Um, the shoes are stacked rubber with um, carpet fiber that's been frayed to make a, a feather. The headdress piece is wallpaper. Um, the skirt is actually really high performing um, sort of pee proof fabric that you'd use in healthcare. <laughs> and the bustier is vinyl because <laughs> it's vinyl. And then here's some details. The coat had to be designed as a one piece so it could all come together. So basically two darts, two seams form the coat which had to be punched and sewn again by hand using carpet fiber. Um, some other looks from other years, including one, my favorite of my daughter who modeled for me my first year um, as an anime character with a little bolero made out of carpet. And then some other years where we did some butterfly themes. Or, um, and then I thought I would close with one last image, which is me backstage smiling, which is unusual because it's pretty hectic. And I had just finished making shoes in the car, but um, more importantly, my model who's smiling here, Gabby, who is great because she's wearing about 35 pounds of dress, <laughs> shoes made out of rubber that are like bolted to her feet, and she's still smiling. Thank you. That was some good-looking flooring.